See, most people think fat is just fat, but here's the truth. The type of fat you eat decides whether your LDL particles get cleared from your blood or stick around raising ApoB and long-term heart risk. Palmitic acid blocks the clearance system. Stearic acid passes through safely. See, olive oil and fish oil, they supercharge LDL clearance. So in this video, I'm breaking down how different fats impact ApoB, why genetics change the story, and what you should eat if you want to protect your arteries for the long run. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, because most people have no idea how much fat type matters for their heart health. Lamb liver, the ultimate superfood. Rich, raw, and unbelievably delicious. See, ApoB is the fingerprint of LDL. Every LDL particle has one ApoB tag. See, your liver clears LDL through receptors. Think of it like a parking garage. Oilic acid makes the garage doors wide open, and palmitic acid it jams the system, blocking cars from leaving. That means more LDL particles circulate. ApoB rises and over time plaque risk goes up. And this is why cholesterol numbers aren't the full story. The fat type you eat changes how well your clearance system works. Now some of you have probably heard the argument, if your ApoB to ApoA1 ratio looks good, you don't need to worry. Let's clear that up. ApoA1 represents HDL particles the so-called good cholesterol. A higher ApoA1 level usually means better reverse cholesterol transport, moving cholesterol out of tissues and back to the liver. But here's the key. A good ratio doesn't erase the risk of elevated ApoB. So you can have a very strong HDL function and still carry too many ApoB containing particles in your blood. And every ApoB particle, regardless of ratios, has the potential to penetrate the artery wall and trigger plaque. So yes, ratios matter for context, but ApoB alone is the driver of atherosclerosis. So if your ApoB is high, the absolute particle count still puts you at risk, even if your ratio looks nice on paper. See, most people don't realize there are actually two types of ApoB. There's ApoB 100 and there's ApoB 48. See, ApoB 100 is the version found on VLDL, IDL, and LDL particles, the ones produced by your liver and most responsible for atherosclerosis. And this is the marker almost always measured in blood tests and it directly reflects the number of circulating atherogenic particles. See, ApoB48, on the other hand, comes from the intestine and is found in chylomicrons, which transport dietary fat after meals. See, ApoB48 doesn't usually linger in the blood long enough to be measured routinely, since it's cleared quickly after eating. So that's why clinicians focus almost exclusively on ApoB100. For like practical purposes, when we talk about ApoB levels in your labs, we're talking ApoB100 with an optimal range under 80 milligrams per deciliter. And if you want to be on the lowest cardiovascular risk zone. Now, ApoB48 testing exists in research, but it isn't something you need for routine care. So now let's compare two saturated fats. You have palmitic acid, C16, main fat in butter, cream, and beef tallow. It stiffens liver cell membranes and reduces all the other receptors recycling, meaning particles linger longer, ApoB goes up. Now stearic acid, C18, found in lamb fat, suet, and cocoa butter, unlike palmitic, it gets converted into oilic acid inside your body. That means it's largely neutral for ApoB. And this is why lamb fat looks safer for cardiovascular markers than butter or tallow. Same saturated fat, 
but different biology. This is the best way to cut and consume lamb raw, super delicious. Now when it comes down to coconut oil is a bit kind of complicated. See MCT8, which is C8 and C10 actually, goes straight to the liver, bypassing LDL completely. Now these give a quick energy and don't raise your ApoB. Now lauric acid on the other hand, which is C12, makes up half of coconut oil. This one does raise LDL in many people, specifically ApoE4 carriers. So for some people, coconut oil is harmless, but for others, it pushes ApoB much higher. So you have genetics plus dose matters. Now to the fats that actually help LDL clearance. And that's what we're looking for. Oilic acid, which is C18 over one, Main fat is found in olive oil and lamb fat. This actually improves all the L receptor activity. So your body clears particles faster, keeping ApoB lower. And olive oil does contain polyphenols. So these do protect LDL from oxidization. And remember, oxidized LDL is a real artery killer. So olive oil isn't just fuel, it's fuel plus armor, for your LDL particles. And we have EPA and DHA from salmon, sardines, and mackerels are unmatched for ApoB safety. They actually lower triglycerides. They make LDL particles larger and less dense. They even improve endothelial function. And if you want ApoB protection, omega-3s aren't optional, they're mandatory. So now not everyone reacts the same. See, genetics play a huge role. So you have ApoE3 homozygous, the majority, they have like a moderate tolerance to saturated fat. And ApoB goes up with too much palmitic acid, but not extreme. And you have ApoE3 over E4 or ApoE4 homozygous, much higher sensitivity. Palmitic acid hits them harder, raising ApoB twice as fast. So this explains why one person eats butter daily with no issues, while another gets a sky-high ApoB from the same freaking diet. So if you're wondering how this plays out in real life, here's a simple framework. So for ApoE3 homozygous, the most common genotype, a safe range is around 0.3 to 0.35 grams of dietary fat per one pound of body weight with the bulk coming from monounsaturated fats like olive oil and lamb fat plus if you could two to three servings of fatty fish per week now for the apo e3 and e4 carriers should be more cautious closer to 0.25 to 0.3 grams per one pound keeping saturated fat from beef, tallow, butter, or coconut under 20 to 25% of total fat. Now for ApoE4 homozygous, the most sensitive often do best closer to 0.2 to 0.25 grams per pound, with most fats coming from olive oil, lamb fat, fish, and a small amount of MCT if tolerated. So for example, at 150 pounds person, that looks like uh, 200 grams of protein paired with about 50 to 70 grams of fat, mostly lamb, fish, olive oil, with at least, let's say, one to two tablespoons of MCT oil for quick energy. This keeps ApoB in check while still fueling performance. Now I know a lot of you watching are doing carnivore and if you've heard influences say just enjoy your fats and protein, don't worry about ApoB. The truth is you're fresh into the game and you've run a CAC score that shows zero calcification. That doesn't mean you're safe forever. See ApoB driven damage doesn't happen in a handful of years. It builds silently over decades. See, elevated ApoB is like a pressure on the system. You won't see blocked arteries right away, but unchecked, it increases the odds that years down the line you do. The smartest move is not to ignore it, but to track it. 
adjust your fats if ApoB is rising and understand that prevention starts long before visible disease shows up. So when it comes to ApoB safety, not all fats are equal. Your top tier includes fish oils rich in EPA and DHA, extra virgin olive oil with its oilic acid and protective polyphenols, and lamb fat, all of which support LDL clearance and protect arterial health. So for these, do aim for about two to four tablespoons of olive oil daily, two to three servings of fatty fish per week, or one to two tablespoons of rendered lamb fat if you cook with it. Now for the middle tier, it does consist of steric rich fats such as cocoa butter and suet, which are generally safe in moderate amounts, around one to two tablespoons per day. Now, the caution tier is where genetics and dose play a bigger role. Butter, cream, and beef tallow are high in palmitic acid, which can raise ApoB. So if used, limit to under one tablespoon daily and monitor blood work very closely. As for coconut oil, also belongs here, since its lauric acid raises LDL in most individuals, especially those with the ApoE4 genotype. So stick to small amounts like one teaspoon daily if tolerated. Now, if your ApoB is running high, the first place to adjust isn't your protein or carbs, it's the type and amount of fat you choose. So the real solution is stacking defenses not chasing one single number. So keep ApoB under 80 milligrams per deciliter, but also fortify your arteries. That means daily omega-3s from fish or two to three grams of APA and DHA, 100 to about 200 milligrams of coenzyme Q10 of ubiquinol to keep mitochondria running, four to six grams of taurine and 400 to 600 milligrams of magnesium to calm vascular stress. Polyphenols from olive oil or six to 12 milligrams of astaxanthin to shield ApoB from oxidation. So pair that with nitric oxide boosters and or even a brisk walk to open vessels. And always track markers like HSCRP and HbA1c to be sure inflammation and sugar spikes aren't undoing your progress. It's never about one supplement or one marker. It's about stacking strategies so your ApoB stays quiet, your endothelium stays strong, and your arteries stay protected for decades. Wrap your pain in a patented lie. White coat prophets in their pharma halls. Sell silence in tiny gel cap walls. Side effects longer than your shift. They numb the Design sold peace and pills, but healing don't come in orange refill. But healing don't come in orange refill.
Sold peace in pills, but 